Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Truck and Freight Alternatives Site Analysis Public Meeting. My name is Mark Trebitz, and I am the Project Manager with the Florida Department of Transportation. We thank you all for being here today to discuss a matter that is important not only to our community, but those who help maintain our livelihood through delivered goods, truck drivers. Just like any motorist, driving can become a tiresome task that requires constant attention to remain safe. The difference between the average motorist and a truck driver is that while many are headed home to rest in their bed, it's likely that a truck driver is looking for a parking spot to rest in their truck. The problem, however, is that truck parking is limited. What we are presenting to you tonight are various locations where parking spaces for trucks can be added throughout Central Florida. Within the past few months, we have researched dozens of areas. We've also heard past concerns from the community so we have been sure to keep in mind how important it is to balance the community impacts of these new locations and the benefit for truck drivers. We're here today to seek your feedback about the potential locations and learn of any additional details or suggestions you may have. We'll now go over the main presentation. And following the presentation, please join us around the room to discuss the project with staff members or answer questions. I will now turn it over to our project team to begin the presentation. Thank you. This public meeting was advertised and is being conducted in accordance with state and federal requirements, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Jennifer Smith, District 5 Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Deland, Florida, 32720, by phone at 386-943-5367, or email at smith 2 at dot.state.fl.us. You may also contact Jacqueline Paramore, State Title VI Coordinator by mail at 605 Suwanee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399-0450 by phone at 850-414-4753 or email at jacqueline.paramore at dot.state.fl.us. This information is shown on a sign at the in-person location, on the project website, and in the meeting notifications. This public meeting was advertised in the Florida Administrative Register on FDOT's public notices website, in the local newspaper, and on the project webpage. In addition, adjacent property owners, interested individuals, and elected and appointed officials, and government agencies were also notified about this public meeting. The environmental review, consultation, and other actions required by applicable federal documents for this project are being or have been carried out by FDOT pursuant to 23 United States Code Section 327 and a Memorandum of Understanding dated December 14, 2016, and executed by the Federal Highway Administration and FDOT. A Project Development and Environment Study, or PD&E study, determines the location and conceptual design of the preferred roadway improvements and the associated social, economic, and environmental effects of the improvements. A PD&E study has three main components. An engineering analysis, which includes defining and evaluating alternatives, including a no-build alternative, environmental evaluations, which evaluate potential impacts to the social, cultural, and physical environments, and a public involvement component to inform and involve all interested parties in the development of the planned transportation project and to seek public input. This process is mandated by the National Environmental Policy Act, or NEPA, and Florida law. It represents a combined effort by technical professionals who analyze information and document the best alternative for a community's transportation needs. The Florida Department of Transportation, FDOT, welcomes you to the public information meeting for the Truck and Freight Alternative Site Analysis PD&E study. The study is being conducted to support freight movement along Interstate 4, also known as I-4, within District 5, which spans Osceola, Orange, Seminole, and Volusia counties. The financial project ID number is 447724-1. Within this meeting, we will discuss the need for truck parking within District 5, highlighting potential sites, and underscore the importance of this to you, our community. 
Your feedback and thoughts are important to the success of this project. At the conclusion of the first round of public meetings, we will further refine the sites based on engineering and environmental analysis and public and agency feedback. The second round of public meetings, where we will present the results and recommendations of the study for your feedback, are anticipated to be held in summer 2022. In order to meet the needs of the trucking community within District 5, the study is looking to identify at least one site in each county for further review. As the number of people and the amount of goods continue to increase in Florida, freight traffic continues to be an essential part of our state's growth and economy. Many of us forget the vital role truck drivers play in our daily life, from our morning coffee to our favorite pair of shoes. Without them, our stores would not be able to supply the needs for our families. Truck drivers are essential, and a safe and efficient environment to do their jobs helps both us and them. Truck parking is a critical issue in the trucking industry. According to the 2021 Critical Issues in the Trucking Industry Report, published by the American Transportation Research Institute, commercial drivers rank truck parking as the number one issue. In fact, this has been the case for the last few years. Jason's Law was established in response to truck parking issues and enacted as part of the Moving Ahead for Performance in the 21st Century Act. Jason's Law allocated funding and directed the U.S. Department of Transportation to evaluate the capability for each state to provide adequate truck parking, assess the volume of commercial vehicle traffic in each state, and develop a system of metrics to measure the adequacy of parking facilities in each state. Lack of truck parking spaces forces truck drivers to spend time searching for parking when they are most fatigued. When truck parking facilities are full, the drivers often choose to park in unauthorized locations such as on exit ramps and highway shoulders. Truck parking is not only a capacity issue, but also a critical safety issue. The trucking industry is indispensable to the American economy. Apart from many other roles and responsibilities, truck drivers are responsible for delivering raw materials to where they will be manufactured and finished products to where they will be sold. Businesses both big and small depend on truck drivers to safely transport their items across the nation, while maintaining efficient delivery times. According to Trucker Path, 40% of truck drivers spend over an hour searching for a place to park. This equates to a $5.1 billion loss in revenue annually, including wasted fuel, time lost, maintenance, and associated crashes. This is important to the department as our mission is to provide a safe transportation system that ensures the mobility of people and goods, enhances economic prosperity, and preserves the quality of our environment and communities. Florida has experienced tremendous growth in people and goods over the last few decades and is expected to continue growth into the future. Today, we have over 21 million people living in the state and over 1,000 people moving to the state every day. Additionally, we proudly host 131 million visitors each year. With an increase in people each year, there is also an increase in goods needed to serve those people. In 2018, FDOT conducted a statewide truck parking study to assess existing truck parking and future demand for truck parking across the state. The study found the I-4 corridor is the most critical corridor in the state, specifically between the Osceola-Polk County line and Interstate 95, also known as I-95. This segment was identified as a key freight corridor, servicing between 7,000 and 20,000 trucks every day. Currently, the only truck parking present along I-4 within District 5 are the 36 spaces near the Longwood area. You may have witnessed the parking deficiencies with the overflow near the Longwood rest stop, where we often see unauthorized parking on the interstate shoulders and rest area ramps. This is a major safety concern for FDOT. This PD&E study is the next step for the district to identify potential solutions that meet the existing and future truck parking demand and improve safety for the traveling public. Today, there are 36 available truck parking spaces along the I-4 corridor. There is a current need or demand for 481 truck parking spaces in and around the I-4 corridor. The demand is anticipated to grow with the continued growth of population and as more facilities like the Amazon Fulfillment Center in Volusia County, the Northport Industrial Park in Seminole County, the Infinity Park in Orange County, and the Geldwen in Osceola County continue to be developed to better serve the region's population. Existing truck parking demand is projected to grow to 750 spaces by 2025 and to 883 spaces by 2040. This is why the region must work together to support our trucking industry and find ways to contribute to a solution. 
The purpose for this PD&E study is to identify, evaluate, and recommend viable candidate truck parking sites along the I-4 corridor in Osceola, Orange, Seminole, and Volusia counties. The study corridor spans a total length of 75 miles across these four counties. The study began by defining primary site selection criteria to identify potential parcels to be further analyzed. Examples of criteria utilized during this primary evaluation included land use to ensure truck parking is in accordance with permitted future land use designation, zoning to ensure truck parking is in accordance with permitted zoning designations, site area to ensure the parcel or potentially combined parcels provide the desired 8 to 20 acres needed to provide truck parking, proximity to I-4 within one half mile to one mile of I-4 to provide parking within a reasonable distance to major truck routes and access to provide trucks direct and easy access to the parking site. This criteria was used as a starting point and was expanded based on availability of qualifying sites. Additional consideration was given to public-owned properties, industrial clusters, and access to connected major highways. In support of the primary selection criteria, local agency input was also used to help identify additional sites. Utilizing the site selection criteria, the study team narrowed the search to 11 potential sites across the four counties. Two potential sites were identified within Osceola County, seven potential sites within Orange County, one potential site within Seminole County, and one potential site within Volusia County. Let's begin with potential truck parking sites to support the I-4 corridor within Osceola County. Two potential truck parking sites have been identified within Osceola County. Both sites are located along Osceola Polk Line Road near US 1792. The two sites are near existing freight facilities, shown in yellow, making these locations desirable for truck parking. These sites are also adjacent to the proposed Poinciana Parkway Extension, or PPE, project that plans to start construction this year to extend up to Osceola Polk Line Road. A PD&E study is currently being conducted for the connection of the PPE from Osceola Polk Line Road to the I-4 State Road 429 interchange. Osceola County Potential Site 1 is located south of Osceola Polk Line Road. The land use for this site is designated as vacant residential and is zoned for agricultural and residential uses. The site is a total of 35.1 acres and is located 3.87 miles from I-4. Direct access between I-4 and the potential site is available through Osceola Polk Line Road and adjacent to the proposed PPE. Osceola County Potential Site 2 is located north of Osceola Polk Line Road. Similar to the potential site to the south, the land use for this site is designated as vacant residential and is zoned for agricultural and residential uses. The site is a total of 24.3 acres and is located 4.06 miles from I-4. Direct access between I-4 and the potential site is available through Osceola Polk Line Road and adjacent to the proposed PPE. Continuing north, Let's look at potential truck parking sites to support the I-4 corridor within Orange County. The seven potential sites identified within Orange County are located between three to eight miles east of the I-4 corridor. One potential site is located at the John Young Parkway and Sand Lake Road intersection. Three potential sites are located along Land Street Road, and three potential sites are located along Taft Vineland Road. As represented on the map in yellow shading, the potential sites are near existing freight facilities, making these locations desirable for truck parking. Orange County Potential Site 1 is located in the northeast quadrant of the John Young Parkway and Sand Lake Road intersection and bounded by the Florida's Turnpike. The land use for this site is designated as vacant government and is zoned as conservation. It is a total of 36.7 acres and is located 2.9 miles from I-4. Direct access between I-4 and the potential site is available through Sand Lake Road. An interchange is planned at the Turnpike and Sand Lake Road location. Orange County Potential Site 2 is located north of Land Street Road, just west of the State Road 528 interchange. The land use for this site is designated as vacant motel and is zoned as industrial. It is a total of 6.8 acres and is located 4.86 miles from I-4. Orange County Potential Site 3 is currently an FDOT office located south of Land Street Road near Parker's Landing, which is approximately one mile east of the State Road 528 interchange. 
This location is planned to be repurposed, with a portion of the parcel potentially being designated as truck parking. The land use for this site is designated as government and is zoned as industrial. It is a total of 9.9 .9 acres and is located 5.95 miles from I-4. Orange County Potential Site 4 is located north of Land Street Road near Tusway Boulevard, which is approximately 1.1 miles east of the State Road 528 interchange. The land use for this site is designated as Distribution Center and is zoned as industrial. It is a total of 4.86 acres and is located 6.03 miles from I-4. Orange County Potential Site 5 is within the Airport Industry Park Orlando development, located south of Tradeport Drive, east of Orange Avenue. The land use for this site is designated as vacant industrial and is zoned as planned development. It is a total of 16.3 acres and is located 6.81 miles from I-4. Direct access between I-4 and the potential site is available through Tradeport Road, which is taft Vineland Road west of Orange Avenue, John Young Parkway, State Road 528, and through the I-4 and State Road 528 interchange. Orange County Potential Site 6 is within the Airport Industry Park Orlando development, located south of Tradeport Drive, near the Ringhaver Drive intersection. The land use for this site is designated as vacant industrial and is zoned as planned development. It is a total of 25.3 acres and is located 7.74 miles from I-4. Orange County Potential Site 7 is within the Airport Industry Park Orlando development, located north of Tradeport Drive near the Ringhaver Drive intersection. The land use for this site is designated as vacant industrial and is zoned as planned development. It is a total of 12.4 acres and is located 8.04 miles from I-4. Continuing north, we will now review the potential truck parking site to support the I-4 corridor identified within Seminole County. One potential site has been identified within Seminole County. It is located near I-4 and surrounded by several freight facilities as depicted in yellow shading on the map. Seminole County Potential Site 1 is located along Monroe Road south of Orange Boulevard and is bounded by the I-4 corridor. The land use for this site is designated as commercial residential and is zoned as planned development. It is a total of 26.2 acres and is located 0.32 miles from I-4. Direct access between I-4 and the potential site is available through the I-4 interchange with US-1792 from Monroe Road just north of the site. Concluding with Volusia County, we will now review the potential truck parking site to support the I-4 corridor identified within Volusia County. One potential site has been identified within Volusia County. It is located on the I-4 corridor approximately 4.8 miles west of I-95. Volusia County Potential Site 1 is located along I-4 near mile marker 127. The land use for this site is designated as vacant government and is zoned as conservation. It is a total of 1,164 acres and is located directly on I-4, providing direct access to the I-4 corridor. Only a portion of this site near I-4 will be used for truck parking. Design for these truck parking sites will include aesthetic enhancements, such as landscape buffers, green space, and aesthetically pleasing stormwater ponds. Access to the sites will be suitable for large trucks, and each site will provide restroom facilities and vending amenities to accommodate visiting truck drivers. The truck parking sites will include eco-friendly features like electrification and solar technologies to reduce emissions. Safety features will also be provided such as surveillance cameras, lighting, and 24-hour security staff to keep these drivers safe. Now that we have reviewed the 11 potential truck parking sites being considered, let's review the next steps of the PD&E study process and how you can get involved. This PD&E study began in April 2021 and is expected to be completed in late 2022. Community feedback is essential in helping us choose the best locations for potential parking sites. Public involvement and coordination began with local agency coordination in December 2021 and will continue throughout the remainder of the study. Four meetings are being held during this first round of public information meetings, one for each county. The information being shown here tonight is the same for each county. The purpose of this first round of meetings is to gather your input about the 11 potential sites and any other comments you may have that can assist the study team with narrowing down to recommended sites.
The second round of public meetings, where we will present the results and recommendations of the study for your feedback, is anticipated to be held in summer 2022. Following the pd and &E study, each site determined as recommended will follow the typical life cycle path of design, right-of-way, and construction phases. Currently, there is available funding for one potential site for design in fiscal year 2022, right-of-way in fiscal year 2024-2025, and construction in fiscal year 2026. This PD&E study will determine the recommended site that will utilize FPID number 446445-1 and allocate funding to additional recommended sites as funding becomes available. It should be noted, design funding is also programmed for one additional site in fiscal year 2024. To follow the status of the project, please visit the project page on the FDOT's Central Florida website www.cflroads.com. Type the project number 447724-1 in the search box at the top right corner of the page, then click Go. The recording of this presentation and all materials shown here tonight are currently available on the website. We encourage your input and feedback about this project. All public comments and questions are part of the public meeting record, and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by 10 days after this public meeting will become part of the project's public meeting record. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing following the meeting. To submit comments in person, you may speak to our project staff on the floor or complete a printed comment form and return it to project staff. If you are participating online, you may submit written questions or comments in the question box on the GoToWebinar control panel. Written comments may also be submitted on the project website at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 447724-1. You may also contact the project manager directly by email at mark.trebitz at dot.state.fl.us or by U.S. mail at the Florida Department of Transportation, 719 South Woodland Boulevard, DeLand, Florida, 32720. You may also call the project manager at 386-943-5157 to provide verbal comments during normal business hours. The contact information is also available on the public meeting notification that you may have received by mail. On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, Thank you for attending this public meeting and providing your input on this project. If you have comments or questions after the meeting, please submit them by 10 days after this public meeting. Contact information, a recording of this presentation, project documents, and other exhibits displayed at the public meeting will be posted on the project website at cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 447724-1. Thank you again, and remember that safety is everyone's responsibility. Have a good evening.